This might be my new favorite wide angle lens for full frame Sony cameras. We are back for one sick lens, the 20 millimeter f 1.8G for Sony full frame cameras. Let's go. First of all, let's start with the build quality. And I gotta say, it actually looks pretty good. It's not all metal or anything. There's definitely some plastic on it, but it all feels premium. But that's what you would expect from a G lens. Not quite G master, but G, so still really good. But it being made of plastic makes it really light. And I've noticed it actually balances really well with the Sony a7C, which is a really small camera and it works. Like my 24 to 70, yeah, that feels really unbalanced when you put that on the a7C, but this doesn't. And also this lens is just pretty small. Like my hands are a lot bigger than this lens and I don't even have big hands. So that tells you it's not big, but it performs really well. So you know this little custom button right here? I actually use this to adjust my white balance. I know that's super weird, but that's what I like to do. We have an aperture ring right here and it clicks, but you can easily just flip that off by flipping this switch right here. And then boom, there you go. No issues, it's silent, you're good. So we know that the lens seems good from the outside, but how does it actually perform? Well, to answer that question, we're gonna actually look at a little sequence I shot. It was nothing crazy, but it was all with the 20 millimeter. I did it just for this purpose. Anyways, here you go. So bored right now. What what's on YouTube? wide angle with bokeh which i really love because then you can kind of get that wide shot but still isolate kind of like what i'm doing right now but this lens is actually going to be a little bit wider whenever i put it on which you know what i think i'm going to go ahead and do that and all right guys this is what it looks like on the a7c so quite a bit wider i'm not so sure about the color yet i haven't got the chance to just manipulate the color in the profile yet to fit this scene, but I think it looks pretty good and I should be able to recover it in color grading. Anything that I don't like, we'll see, but I love how wide it is. That's pretty awesome. Like I got this extra bit of field of view that I wanted while retaining a blurry background. And for these studio type of shots, that's what I like because I mean, my room's not really that cool. You don't need to see the background really clearly because it's nothing too crazy. So if it's blurred out and it looks good, that's better than if it's not, but don't always blur your backgrounds. We'll talk about that in a different video. Anyways, I got really off track. It has wide angle with a blurry background. It's very sharp. Also, it's gonna be really nice in low light because you're pairing a new Sony full frame camera with a 1.8 aperture, 20 millimeter. So it's gonna just look really nice even in low light. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, if you use crop mode, I'll show you. I don't know if this is in focus or not, but you can get a 32 millimeter equivalent or around that area at least. So what I'm trying to say is you can still use this for multiple different things. If you need a little bit closer in of a shot, you can do that. You could probably get pretty close to a digital 50 millimeter without losing much quality because if you're filming in 4K and you're already at like 30 something mils after the crop mode, then you could probably just crop in a little bit more and you'd be fine. So, I mean, there's actually a lot you can do with this lens. All right, guys, and this is what it looks like vlogging outside. Right now I'm using Catalyst Brows to make sure that it's at least decently stable. It might not be perfect, but look at the background. It's really blurry. Uh, for this, I have to have an ND filter because we are outside in direct sunlight. Also, my shutter speed is up just a little bit. I realize, like, yes, I can see that. It's because of Catalyst Brows that I have to have that up a little bit. 
otherwise it just won't work as well. But let's say you don't have Catalyst Brows. Well, let's show you what that's gonna look like without it. So now I can have the shutter speed correct, but it probably won't look as stable when I walk around. I don't assume. I do have steady shot turned on. I don't think that's gonna make a difference. The stabilization in the A7C, garbage. It's the one thing I hate about it, but Catalyst Browse always comes in clutch. If it's an older camera, I hope you have a gimbal or you don't really plan on walking around with it much. But if you have Catalyst Browse, a gimbal, or you're not gonna walk around with it much, this lens could probably do a lot of good things for you. I think it looks pretty nice. Blurry, wide angle, if I full extend, look how much field of view I actually have. And comfortably, here's where I would hold it. So still enough field of view for me. So why would you buy this lens over the G Master 24 millimeter F1.4, the obviously superior lens to this one? Why would you pick the 20 millimeter? Well, it's lighter, wider, cheaper, reasons like that. It depends on what you're using it for. With my scenario, I wanted the 20 millimeter and I'm actually really glad that that's what I went for. Really? <laughs> That's going at the end of the video for sure. There's a hole! Look! Here I am trying to my, shoot product B-roll, guys, and she's just like, shoe, Ooh, don't. My <laughs> shoe got stuck in here, so I almost fell. Yeah? Leave me alone.